There's a unique, comforting joy to be had in revisiting the stuff you used to enjoy in your childhood. Modern entertainment is in no way worse. In fact, in my opinion, the quality of content on the whole only improves. However, and I'm sorry massive catalogue of Netflix originals, you're just never going to win against a 25-year-old episode of The Simpsons I've seen 10 billion times. Nostalgia is incredibly powerful, and with the modern world at times feeling a teeny bit overwhelming, it's safe to say that in the last year I've done quite a bit more of that revisiting than I normally would. And I know I'm not alone in doing this, because when last month the gods gifted us the Friends reunion, me and at least 10 billion other people lost our collective minds. When five of the six original cast and, I don't know, someone's Irish uncle? walked onto the set of that purple apartment 17 years after they last walked out of it, I was convinced that this was the most nostalgic I'd ever feel in 2021. That is until I heard this. I know, you see, somehow the world will change for me and be so wonderful. Live life, breathe air. I know somehow we're gonna get there and feel so wonderful. It's all for real. I'm telling you just how I feel. So wake up the members of my nation. It's your time to be. There's no chance unless you take one. But before we discuss the 2021 series, let us first rewind the clock to around 14 years ago. iCarly is a teen sitcom created by... Dan Schneider. If you don't know why I had that reaction to saying that guy's name, I'm not going to go too much into it here, but I recommend reading the Deadline article reporting on why Nickelodeon cut ties with Schneider in 2018. Nickelodeon didn't respond to the report, so you kind of just have to make up your own minds. But yeah, what's alleged is not great. Also, I recommend reading the June 2021 New York Times interview with Schneider that also speaks of the Viacom CBS investigation. To the best of my knowledge, Schneider didn't have anything to do with the production of this new series, and is only mentioned as a creator credit. So even though his extensive creative input, which on numerous occasions, can at best be described as a bit flipping weird, sadly kind of taints a lot of the original for me, it was a sigh of relief knowing I could watch this new series as a somewhat fresh start. Anyway, iCarly originally ran from 2007 to 2012, and is centred around Carly, a teenager who lives with her eccentric older brother Spencer, who decides to set up a live web show with her best friends Sam and Freddy. Much to their surprise, the show achieves huge popularity, and the rest of the series revolves around how the characters balance the life of a famous content creator with the life of a teenager. Then, after six seasons, iCarly concludes with Carly going to live with her dad in Italy for some reason, thus putting the web show on hiatus. While I saw a good portion of the series, in its original run I'd stopped watching sometime before its natural conclusion, and in fact I've only just watched the original's ending in preparation for this video. The reason for this was simple, I'd kind of grown out of Nickelodeon. Prior to the 2021 series, iCarly had a bittersweet place in my heart because it was essentially the last hurrah of my childhood before I moved on to more adult content. I was still a kid when it premiered, but it was a transitionary period, and by the end, I basically wasn't anymore. That's maybe why I think more fondly of Drake and Josh, because I was always a kid throughout its run, and all my memories surrounding it are exclusively that of childhood. However, that's what makes iCarly 2021 so damn beautiful to me. The show I left behind to grow up has now grown up too. iCarly 2021 picks up with Carly, who is back living in Seattle with roommate Harper. In the meantime, she hosted radio shows in Italy and college, but is now raring to get back online and start up her own channel. Spencer accidentally became super rich off his sculpture of the White House that was half melted to reflect the US's disintegrating democracy, the accident being that he never meant for it to spontaneously combust. Freddy has had two divorces, a failed startup, shares custody of his adopted stepdaughter Millicent, and at 26 is back living with his mum. All of this information about the characters is subtly drop-fed to us over the course of a season- I'm joking, of course. <laughs> 
The characters literally tell us their life stories within about 5 minutes. I know it's been like 9 years, but honestly, seeing these actors as their characters felt so natural that the finale might as well have taken place 5 minutes ago. As in the original one, Miranda Cosgrove carries this series in a way she makes it look effortless quite honestly. However, in the original series, I felt her likability was slightly more to her detriment. Sharing the screen with Sam, a more flawed and tougher outer shell character, and this series coming fresh off the heels of Drake and Josh, where Cosgrove had embedded herself in the minds of viewers as the greatest TV antagonist of all time. Don't at me, you know I'm right. I feel like the writers slightly overcompensated and took the character too far in the opposite direction. However, 26 year old Carly is noticeably more flawed. And is it just me? Or did anyone else find that there was something slightly off about her this time around? A more obvious example of this being that she keeps printing off photos of guys she's had less than two dates with. But perhaps more subtly, when she does stuff like this. Wow. I always wanted one of these as a kid. And now that I'm holding it, I finally have one. <laughs> Either way, there's a distinct self-awareness Cosgrove plays the role with that makes the character very enjoyable to watch. What does your dad do? Well, he's in the Air Force, but was somehow on a submarine. <laughs> and... I'm not exactly sure. Freddy is basically exactly the same as how he was in the original series, with Nathan Cress adding the same self-awareness to the character as Cosgrove. And... double? I also love his backstory, and the fact he's been forced to live back at his mother's with his new kid is honestly hilarious. Even if it's not at all relatable. <coughs> All the co-stars have a very natural chemistry with each other, but I in particular enjoyed how Cress bounces off of Jerry Trainer. Which brings me on to Spencer, who is obviously still the best character. This dude adds so many nuances to Spencer that he makes any line instantly hilarious to me, and Jerry Trainer is seriously a master of physical comedy. How he's not as big as Jim Carrey, I do not know. The absence of Jeanette McCurdy as Sam is certainly felt. I'm not going to go into it here, McCurdy has spoken openly about the trauma she experienced as a child actor, but basically, McCurdy's life was very hard during the production of the original series, and when you hear why she eventually quit acting altogether, it's pretty damn understandable that she wouldn't want to partake in the 2021 series. However, I like how the added characters of Harper, played by Lacey Mosley, and Millicent, played by Jaden Triplett, don't serve as replacements, but fill new roles. The writers clearly have a lot of respect for McCurdy, and I think would welcome her back with open arms if she ever wanted to return. The other noticeable absence is of course, Nicky Deuce, but I'm sure the same could be said for him. <laughs> On the topic of new cast members, I liked the character of Harper. I think she fits very naturally with the original cast, and in particular, has very good chemistry with Carly. At first, I just saw Millicent as an annoying kid and I was kind of waiting for the show to kill her off. No offense to Triplet as an actor, she plays the role <laughs> very believably. I just have far less tolerance for snarky kids, now I'm not one. That being said, it was while watching the third episode that the point of this character clicked in my head, when she literally replicated that interesting meme of Megan from Drake and Josh at the computer. It was here I realised that the universe had come full circle, and that Millicent was a reincarnation of Megan, and now Cosgrove was filling the Drake slash Josh role. Megan! This was such a nice touch to the series, and instantly made me not hate this character anything like as much. The characters have grown up, but so too has the writing, with plotlines more rooted in adult life situations. You still have the more playful, abstract plotlines, such as Carly tracking down one of her haters, and Spencer being blinded by pepper spray, but these also come alongside dating as a divorced dad plotlines. The writers are also very aware that it's 2021, so now you have storylines centred around cancel culture, memes, and lattes. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know it's very easy for a comedy show to, in a desperate attempt to stay relevant, take on these subjects in a very on-the-nose manner. I can think of a few examples, and the results ain't pretty. Young audiences are often far smarter than the people making these jokes, and they know when they are being pandered to. However, I feel this style of on-the-nose humour works in iCarly's case because it has literally always been a show about characters trying to keep up with modern trends. It makes sense that Carly would now be an influencer, just like it would make sense that a kid would see her as kind of lame, and a 40-year-old man would flat out only see the negatives of today's smartphone culture. The writing is also self-aware, and while the writers clearly have a deep respect for, and very much keep the spirit of the original series, they're also very happy to make fun of the dumber elements of the original, that kinda just come with being a product of Nickelodeon. Now, I have to admit, nostalgia might play a pretty significant part in my enjoyment for the new series, and why I'm happy to overlook the weaker elements of the show? So I'm curious to see how much new audiences get out of it. Hey people of 2021, want to watch the new series of iCarly? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> While on the whole it is a more adult show, the addition of Millicent and a good portion of the jokes do make it feel like the writers are trying to also cater to the same demographic of the original show. And I don't blame them for doing this. While I think ditching these elements would make the show tighter, I understand that disillusioned adults in their 20s who like revisiting their childhood is a slightly niche audience. That being said, I'm always fascinated by works of fiction that age with you, and it's a unique feeling to be part of a certain generation of viewers. iCarly 2021 was a gamble, but in my opinion, it's a gamble that definitely paid off.